So Big Tree Tech reached out and wanted to send me their K-Touch clipper screen. They didn't ask me to do a video about it, they just wanted me to check it out. And before I get into my opinion on it, let me just give you a quick rundown of what it is and what it does by simply reading their description. It says it has seamless wireless control. You can effortlessly manage and control your prints from anywhere around your workspace. Okay, sounds good. K-Touch can assist in debugging clipper printers such as in-stop status, Z-offset calibration, and auto PID tuning. Okay. With magnetic charging and a durable 30-minute battery life, K-Touch allows you to manage your prints without needing to stay plugged in. So basically what they're saying is you can walk around your house or office with this and be able to check on the status of your prints without having to run to the printer or a computer. It features an intuitive interface providing comprehensive control with just a simple touch. K-Touch can control clipper printers for remote printing, print head position, filament, extrude, retract, and bed and nozzle heating. Okay. Seamlessly switch control between multiple printers, streamlining operations, and boosting productivity for your print farm. And you can easily switch between the K-Touch firmware and the Panda firmware if you use something like a Bamboo Labs printer. Sounds great. Okay, so that's what they say about it. Let's open it up and take a look at it. Slice through the tape plate, gleaming like it's combat. Bubble wrap, armor popping loud like a drum track. Boxes stacked, tech treasures bestowed. Unveiling gadget circuits overflowed. Foam peanuts scatter, confetti in the wind. Screens and boards revealed, the party begins. Big tree tech blessings, straight from the source. Innovation in a box full of throttle, no remorse. Unboxing like a boss, cutting through the floss. Treasures in the post, tech the unmost. Bursting bubbles and stacks, electronics over packs. From tape to tech, got the loot and spec. Grease proof paper stands unveil the hidden gems. Screwdrivers drivers and bits, precision in the hem. Pin connectors gleam, future in my grip. Assembling dreams, ain't losing my grip. Circuit boards like royalty, royalty in the gears. Wire bundles tied tight, no room for fears. Big tree tech parcels, holy grail for nerds. Unbox a treasure trove with outspoken words. Techie dreams from paper cuts, worlds from small slices. Innovation packed tight, rolls the dice with vices. Foam layer shed. Innovation is bred from a box of tricks. Future tech is thread. Spec. Grease proof papers dance, unveil the hidden gems, screwed drivers and bits, precision in the hem, pink connectors gleam, future in my grip, assembling dreams ain't losing my grip. Alright, now I'm gonna do the setup. I'm not even gonna bother with the instructions, I'm just gonna jump right in and see how easy it is. So the first thing I did was choose English as my language and hit next. Then I just connected it to my Wi-Fi. I started searching for my printer, but after almost a minute, I got tired of waiting and added it manually by adding the printer's IP address. And using port 80. Then I clicked OK, and then I clicked on the printer name, and then OK, and next again to connect. And then I pretty much just felt out the UI.
There's a section where you can set the temp and move the head around and extrude or retract some filament. When you click start printing, it's supposed to show all the models you have loaded to the printer, but I got tired of waiting again and backed out of it. I really didn't plan on reprinting anything that was on there anyway. Next, I tried setting the temperature, and they have pre-programmed temps on the side for different types of filament like PLA, PETG, and so on. So I clicked PLA for the nozzle and the bed, which were 200C and 60C respectively. I normally print PLA at 210, so I went back and manually changed the nozzle to 210. Then I just meandered through the UI again. and checked out the section where you can see the options for the in-stop status and calibrate the PID and the Z offset. After that, I went back to my PC and loaded in the G code for some hooks that I needed to print. And you can see it update on the K touch screen right there. Okay, I think this screen has some potential. I think the design with the magnetic base is very cool. It's very well designed. But do I see this as being a necessity? Well, as for now, not really. There's nothing I can do on this screen that I can't do on my cell phone. There's actually less that I can do compared to my cell phone. I can open up Mainsail in the browser and check the print status and look at the model through the webcams run a PID tune, and all that. And with multiple tabs open in the browser, I can check multiple printers. Not that I have multiple printers running Clipper at the time. But we always have our cell phones in our pocket, so as long as it's on the same network as the printers, I can use it for the same things that this screen offers right now. That being said, they are planning to update this screen's firmware with some added features. And I for one hope that they at least add the ability to check the webcams. As it is, it's not at all useless, but with the possibility to check the cams alone, I could see myself using it more than I do now. I have hopes that this will get some great updates, and their GitHub has some pretty good feature requests already. But should you run out and get one right now? Well, I'll just leave that up to you. Circuit boards like loyalty, loyalty in the gears, wire bundles tied tight, no room for fears. Three tech parcels, holy grail for thirds. Unbox the treasure trove with outspoken words.